Welcome to our lecture series on lipids. Here we will learn about the process of beta oxidation and energy production. When lipids are plentiful from uptake in the diet or due to fatty acid release by adipose tissue, target cells such as skeletal muscle will receive this energy payload. Free fatty acids are passed from serum albumin through transporters such as the fatty acid transport protein, FATP, and CD36. Lipoproteins can also bind with apolipoprotein receptors, APOR, and release triazoglycerides into the cell. Tags will then be broken down into free fatty acids and glycerol by lipase enzymes. Free fatty acids will be chaperoned by fatty acid binding proteins, FABPs, within the cytosol. If energy levels are low in the cell, the fatty acids will be targeted to the mitochondria, where they can be oxidized and utilized in the Krebs cycle to produce ATP. The first step in this process is to transfer the fatty acids across the mitochondrial inner membrane. Thus, the fatty acids must first be activated to the coenzyme A associated form to begin this journey. Note that this is an energy utilizing step where ATP is consumed in the process. This is similar to the first stage of glycolysis where there needs to be energy investment before there can be energy gain. Here is a more detailed mechanism of the fatty acyl CoA synthetase enzymes. In the first step, the carbonyl oxygen from the fatty acid attacks the first phosphate position creating the first transition state. Magnesium from the enzyme coordinates with the other two phosphate groups and helps to mediate their dissociation. This creates the fatty acyl adenylate intermediate. The adenylate serves as a good leaving group for the second half of the reaction, where coenzyme A mediates attack on the carbonyl carbon of the acetate group. The adenylate AMP is kicked out and fatty acyl CoA is released as the product of the reaction. With the formation of the fatty acyl CoA, the fatty acid is now prepared to move into the mitochondrial matrix. Here is an overview of the mitochondrial pathways needed for the oxidation of fatty acids during energy utilization. The first step is to move the fatty acid from the cytoplasm into the matrix of the mitochondria. As we have seen for other molecules, this is usually not a straightforward process. Fatty acids are no different. They require these three enzymes embedded in the mitochondrial outer membrane, MOM, or the mitochondrial inner membrane, MIM, to mediate the transfer. We will look at this process in more detail in the next few slides. We will then focus on the beta oxidation pathway involved in oxidizing the fatty acids to generate acetyl-CoA and electron carrier molecules, NADH and FADH2. And you are already familiar with the third step, where acetyl-CoA is further oxidized in the Krebs cycle, tricarboxylic acid or citric acid cycle, to release carbon dioxide and more electron carriers. L-carnitine is a derivative of the amino acid lysine and was first isolated from meat in 1905, hence the name carnitine. In this reaction, the carnitine palmiloyl transferase 1 enzyme, CPT1, enables the alcohol functional group on carnitine to attack the carbonyl carbon on the fatty acyl CoA. Coenzyme A then serves as a good leaving group for the carnitine reaction. The resulting product, fatty acyl carnitine, is then transported into the matrix of the mitochondria through a translocase protein. Once in the matrix, the carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 enzyme, CPT2, completes the reverse reaction and restores the fatty acyl CoA and empty carnitine. Note that the translocase used in this reaction is an antiporter. Carnitine moves from the matrix to the cytoplasm when a fatty acyl carnitine moves into the matrix of the mitochondria. 
This is another schematic summary of this transport process. The acyl-CoA is converted into acyl-carnitine, which allows the movement of the molecule through the translocase antiporter into the matrix. Free carnitine moves into the cytoplasm at the same time. Once in the matrix, the acyl-carnitine is converted back to fatty acyl-CoA. The carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 protein, CPT1, is the rate-limiting step for the beta-oxidation, or breakdown of long-chain fatty acids, LCFAs. It is inhibited by malonyl-CoA. Malonyl-CoA is a three-carbon unit that is formed as an intermediate during fatty acid biosynthesis. Thus, it is the opposite pathway of fatty acid oxidation, similar to what we saw with glucose during glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. The activation of fatty acid biosynthesis is dependent on two conditions. The first is that there are a lot of precursor molecules present, for example, a lot of acetyl-CoA. This will serve as a substrate for making malonyl-CoA. The second condition is that there's plenty of energy present in the cell. If ATP levels are high and AMP levels are low, then fatty acid biosynthesis and the storage of energy molecules makes sense. If energy levels are low and a lot of AMP is present, the AMP-activated kinase will phosphorylate acetyl-CoA carboxylase and inhibit the production of malonyl-CoA. If malonyl-CoA levels are low, CPT1 will remain active and fatty acids will be transported into the matrix where they will be used to produce ATP. This is an overview of the four major steps in the beta-oxidation pathway. We will look at each of these individual steps in detail over the next few slides. The first enzymatic step in the pathway is a dehydrogenation step that is mediated by an acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme. This enzyme mediates the removal of two hydrogens and two electrons, one from each of the alpha and beta carbon positions. Recall that the alpha carbon is located directly next to the carbonyl carbon and that the beta position is located two carbons away from the carbonyl carbon. Within this mechanism, two electrons and two protons reduce a molecule of FAD to FADH2. The remaining electrons previously shared within these bonds fold inward and form the carbon-carbon double bond. This forms a trans-delta-2 enoyl-CoA intermediate. Thus, this reaction step is also a lyase reaction. In step two, water is added across the double bond in a hydratase reaction. The hydroxyl group is added to the beta carbon position and the hydrogen to the alpha position, forming beta hydroxy acyl CoA intermediate. The new hydroxy group is further oxidized to a ketone in the third step. Two electrons and two hydrogens are removed from the hydroxy carbon at the beta position and donated to the electron carrier NAD+. This results in the formation of a ketone at the beta position, forming the intermediate beta ketoacyl coa In the final enzymatic step, the carbon-carbon bond between the alpha and beta carbons is cleaved by the addition of coenzyme A. The hydrogen from coenzyme A is incorporated into the newly formed acetyl-CoA product, and the coenzyme A component incorporated into the remaining fatty acyl chain, forming a fatty acyl CoA that is two carbons shorter than the original one. This process is repeated until the entire fatty acid has been oxidized to acetyl CoA. Now let's go back to our overview slide and take a look in a little more detail. The first step in the beta oxidation pathway is the dehydrogenation or lyase reaction. This can be completed in the mitochondria by one of three enzymes 
that depend on the nature of the fatty acids serving as the substrate. Very long-chain fatty acids, greater than 12 carbons in length, or most of the fatty acids incorporated into tags, will be dehydrogenated by the VLCAD, the very long-chain acyl dehydrogenase enzyme. Medium long-chain fatty acids, between 6 and 12 carbons in length, will be dehydrogenated by MCAD, the medium-chain acyl dehydrogenase. And short-chain fatty acids between 4 and 6 carbons in length will be dehydrogenated by SCAD, the short-chain acyl dehydrogenase. The next three steps can be completed by three independent enzymes, ECHS1, the enoyl-CoA hydratase, the HADH, the beta-hydroxy acyl dehydrogenase enzyme, and the KAT enzyme, the beta-cato acyl thiolase enzyme, or by a single super enzyme that has all three of these activities, known as MTP, mitochondrial trifunctional protein. Similar to VLCAD, MTP is embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria and is used for long-chain fatty acids, mostly between 8 and 16 carbons in length, although deficiencies in this enzyme do result in accumulation of C18 carbons as well, suggesting that MTP also has activity on these fatty acids. These soluble individual enzymes in this pathway are used for carbons between 4 and 6 carbons in length. Thus, as a fatty acid progresses through repeated cycles of beta-oxidation, the machinery used to generate the acetyl-CoA units will switch to the soluble enzymes once the length of the fatty acid has been sufficiently reduced. In the end, each round of beta-oxidation yields acetyl-CoA that can enter into the Krebs cycle and a fatty acyl-CoA that is two carbons shorter. In the next section, we will discuss how you can calculate the amount of ATP produced through the utilization of fatty acids.